What's happening, what's happening, what's happening? Of course you know it's your boy b Hot Radio shout in. Hey man, I got an A-Town legend stepping off in this thing. Some call him Peace Stacks. Most know him by player Poncho in this thing. What's good with it, boss? b how what's going on with you, man? Man, feeling good, feeling great, man. Appreciate you taking some time out to kick a little flavor with me today in this thing, yeah, man. Hey, man, you know I got to get down here for the homie, man. Hey, man, Poncho. Take me to the top, man. I mean, coming into this music game mm -hmm. at the tender age of 15, man, yeah. what was that like for you realizing that, hey, man, I want to get in here and start cranking this thing up early? Man, I always wanted to be an artist, you know what I'm saying, ever since I was a little kid when I was in elementary. Um, actually, music runs in my family. My, my Uncle Bobby, he used to actually play, um, he had his own band, but he actually played in the Tams with Tiny's dad. My you God. know what I'm saying? So, yeah. you know what I'm saying, my Uncle Bobby used to play with other groups like Lil Richard, you know what I'm saying, Otis Redden, you know what I'm saying? He did he did, did, did a couple of shows with Jimi Hendrix, you know what I'm saying? But yeah. he had his own band at the same time, Liberation and Celebrity Ball. But I watched my uncles, you know what I'm saying, my mama brothers, you know what I'm saying, that she had three Three older brothers, she's you know the youngest, yeah, so yeah. they had they own B three organs and you know what I'm saying PA system, you know what I'm saying drums and everything, you know what I'm saying. So I mean you know live horn section, guitars and all of it. So they had the actual band they used to practice at my grandfather's house. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying. So I mean ever since I was a little kid, they would bring me shirts back, you know what I'm saying, airbrush with my name on it, you know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying, with the rhinestones and everything. So I ain't want to be nothing else but an entertainer. And then what really made it happen was when I seen Michael Jackson moonwalk, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> What he, did, what he did, Billy Jean, man, yeah, on yeah. TV at, 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 at the reunion, you know yeah. what I'm saying, um, for um, Barry Gordy. That's right. And, and it was over, man. I knew I just wanted to be an entertainer then, you know what I'm saying, even more. Talk to me about growing up in the A-Town, though, man. I mean, what was that like for you, and what was the music that inspired you to get into the game? Oh, uh, man, uh, growing up in Atlanta, man, uh, you know, we didn't have any uh, uh, rap music being played on the radio until Friday and Saturday, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And um, you can only hit it, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> like I said, on Fridays and Saturdays. But Fact. they still had the live remotes going on back in the day from Mr. V's, yeah, Mr. Yeah. V Club, Mr. V's. Yeah. And as a kid, I would listen to it, you know, I would used to hear Raheem the Dream on the radio. But uh, when I heard MC Shadi say, everything I say, you know it's real from MC Shadi and I gotta, gotta be, be tough. tough. Hey, man, that was it. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Shout out my idol, man. And, yeah. You know, so, you know, he was a big influence, you know what I'm saying? Raheem the Dream at the same time. It was like um, when I got on the J team, you know what I'm saying? It mm. was like, you know, that was even more of a bigger influence, you know what I'm saying? Coming yeah. up under the king, you know what I'm saying? It with J and yeah. seeing how things were really put together and everything. So, you know. Break down that J team to me, though, man, because, I mean, it was a lot of hard-hitting boys over there going crazy. So, I mean, what was it like getting down with that mm. team? And break down that time and that era in Atlanta for those who might not know exactly what y'all brought to the game at that time. Okay. Uh, so, again, like I said, you couldn't hear rap music until Fridays or Saturdays on the radio here in Atlanta because yeah. it was only one radio station here in Atlanta at that time. That's that, right. You know, that would play hip-hop. So, I mean, well, that was here at the time, yeah. <laughs> period. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, um, you know, if you wanted to hear rap music, like, Sunday through uh, Thursday, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, you had yeah. to have an Edward with J-Tape. So, the whole city had to come to the east side to get an Edward with J-Tape, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Unless you stole one from your friend or your <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Or, you know what I'm saying? Having to just come up on somebody else's copy, you know what I'm saying? But, um, yo, the, the J team, you know what I'm saying? Um, getting on with the J team and, and, and being a part of something that was already great and, and becoming great with it and yeah. learning, you know what I'm saying? It was really school for me at the same time, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Being yeah. 15 years old, I didn't know how I was going to get in the music industry, but yeah. I, I believed in myself and I knew, you know what I'm saying? I always believed that God would lead and guide me, and He did, you know what I'm saying? I mean, how do you feel? though, Poncho, when you look back on this thing you realize that you was one of the pioneers laying it down for the town that would eventually become the hip-hop capital in this thing. Man, I, I, I'm going to tell you straight up, I, I didn't know it was going to be like this, man, yeah. but I'm so grateful for the blessing, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I can't even front, man. You know, God, that's what I'm saying. If you believe in God and believe in yourself, man, the things that God, can, the places that God can take you and the things that he could do for you, you know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, it, it'll go beyond your wildest imagination, you Come know? On. So, you know, all praises go to God, man. You know what I'm saying? I ain't put myself in the position, even though I did, through my affirmations and visualizations that brought about my manifestations. Come on I now. I know it at the time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. What's up, what's up, man? When that song went crazy as hell, mm -hmm. what was going through your mind when you realized, hell, I got me one mm -hmm. out here in these streets, man? 
Man, uh, so me and Kids Rock, you know what I'm saying? What Kizzy, up, though, Kids? My big brother Kids Rock did the beat for uh, "What's Up, What's Up" and everything. You know what I'm saying? We was already DJing in the clubs. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. We was like, we had club assists. Um, but before "What's Up, What's Up," you know, we had the first whoop there it is. We had a town drop. You know what Come I'm saying? Come on now. But we didn't know nothing about copyrights and all that stuff uh, back then. So <clears throat> yeah, we had the first whoop there it is. You well, know, we what gonna saying? go back to that because we gonna get into that one too. But but yeah, it, it, what's up? So what, let's go back to what's up, what's up then. So oh, so. We already had a foundation, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. JT was already the foundation, and we were making our mixtapes. So when we started dropping records, everybody was like, it ain't like they, they didn't know of us, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So when we uh, came out with the What's Up, What's Up, you know what I'm saying? When kids produced that for me and everything, it was just, it, it took off. We was mm -hmm. in the club, we broke our own records, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like, it wasn't like that. We would, we, we appreciate all the other DJs that helped support the record at, at yeah. the same time and everything, but we, we kicked it had off. Your you own know what movement. We had our own movement. So we yeah. were breaking our own records, you know what I'm saying? On the, on the J tapes, and we were breaking. Breaking our own records in the clubs because we was in the clubs every night anyway. That official original whoop that is, man. I mean, break that down because everybody knows the whoop that is phenomenon that was going on mm -hmm. in the A town at that time. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, what was that like when y'all dropped that thing? And then also break down to me to when somebody tried to run off on the plug. All right, so it, it went like this. You know what I'm saying? We had A-Town Drop, which was a dance mm -hmm. also that went with the record. Mm -hmm. So everybody, we had everybody in the city doing A-Town Drop. You yeah. know what I'm saying? You know, Atlanta been one of these dancing <laughs> cities. You know That's what, what we going to do. That's what we going to do. Yeah. So, yeah, we had A-Town Drop going wild in the regular clubs and in the strip clubs. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And it was like, you know what I'm saying? Um, Like I say, uh, do the A-Town Drop. Yeah, come on now. Whoop, there it is. We just didn't know about the copyrights. With 95 South. Uh. They came to Atlanta. That's when Itchy Bun was here in Atlanta, and they heard A Town drop on the radio. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? That's how they got this. Tag team, they got it because DC was uh, DJing at uh, Magic City at the time. Yeah. It was just a hot saying in the street, you know yeah. what I'm saying, that we had no crunk up. But like I said, we didn't know anything about copyrights or anything like that. So we got, we called uh, uh, Twin Production, Al uh, and Low, you know what I'm saying, yeah. Twin Production. They they, they they signed us over there uh, to their, their label at the time, and we put it out through uh, Al and Low, which then Belmont Records came on and they signed us, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's like, uh, I was supposed to have been in, in high school, you know what I'm saying? But I had to go on and leave and head out, head out to California, you know what I'm saying? Damn. That was my first time ever getting on the plane yeah. when these people called like, hey, we want to sign y'all, you know what I'm saying? They flew us out to Cali. Yeah. The rest is history. Okay, what about when you looked up and there was 15 different whoop dad is at one damn time? Because I remember as a young man thinking, what the hell is going on with all these different songs? Well, again, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I was like, you know what I'm saying? They, they done got our song, you know what I'm saying? But at the same time, I didn't know the business, so I had yeah. to learn the business. So I paid a real... Uh, Nice amount of money <laughs> to learn the business. Let's exactly. say that. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So it, it's like a lot of times now, you know, uh, a, a lot of artists, you know, um, through my studio, I teach them the business. You uh, know what I'm saying? Because it is business. Yeah. It, it's really 99% business and 1% talent. Come on, Come now, on now. You know what I'm saying? So, exactly. Yeah, you got to handle your business. <laughs> you ain't never lied about that.